For those who don't know, The Daily Show is based in New York City, which is easily America's most famous pigeon toilet. <laughs> Now, on a normal day in New York City, millions of people take the subway to work. But yesterday was far from a normal day. The morning rush hour quickly turning to chaos when police say a gunman put on a gas mask and opened fire. At about 8.30 a.m. Tuesday, panicked passengers on a Manhattan-bound train fled for their lives after a gunman set off a smoke bomb, then fired more than 30 rounds into the crowd. In another car, video shows riders trapped in a thick cloud of smoke waiting for the train to pull into the station. Passengers were seen dragging each other to safety or performing first aid, while others fled to the street above. Some good news is that none of the injuries appear to be life-threatening. I get off the train and the first thing I smell, the smoke that hit me in the face was not normal train smoke. This is like something's burning, it's thick, it's heavy. Okay, first of all, thank God nobody died in this attack. That's the main thing. Right? It's honestly a miracle, in fact. And kudos to all the people who stepped up to help each other in a crazy moment like this, you know? Because you saw the people helping and they, they were, like, assisting each other. You know, people always say that New Yorkers are selfish and rude and won't lift a finger for other people, and, and that's true <laughs> on a normal day. <laughs> on a normal day, New Yorkers are not trying to help anybody. <laughs> like, I, I, I actually remember, I actually remember when I first moved to New York, I was walking one day behind an old lady and her shopping bag broke and all her fruits and vegetables rolled out, right? And then instead of helping her, everyone just like bounced around the vegetables. <laughs> like everyone just like dance dance revolutioning over the vegetables. <laughs> no one helped, no one, and as a South African, I was like, this is crazy, what are you doing? Everyone just carried on with their day. I was like, yo, what a bunch of assholes. <laughs> so then I bent down to like pick up some of her stuff and she was like, hey, don't touch my shit, <laughs> hey! I was like, okay, wow. <laughs> Welcome to New York. <laughs> But one thing I'll say about New York City, as someone who's been lucky enough to live here now for seven years, is that when shit hits the fan, New Yorkers come together, man. Always, always. Because in that train station, people weren't just trampling other people, they were carrying the injured. They were performing first aid. Others were even looking for the shooter, looking for the shooter. It was one of the bravest things you could do. You know, and that's one thing I'll say about this city. You know, I, I don't know how to explain its energy. People ask me, what is New York like? New York is the best, worst city in the world. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it. It's the greatest city I've ever lived in. <laughs> and look, don't get it twisted. This was a scary day for New York, you know, because compared to other big cities, New York is actually a very safe place. And a mass shooting is not a regular occurrence here. They, they just don't happen. You know, so when something like this happens on the subway, It affects all New Yorkers, because the subway is the lifeblood of New York. You know, it connects everyone when it works. <laughs> don't, don't take it on the weekend. Don't, don't even try. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the subway is like one of the few places in the world where you, you'll, find, you'll find a homeless person sitting next to a Wall Street banker. You know, whose deal has probably helped make that person homeless. Like, <laughs> it's, no, it's one of the few cities in the world where you can't ignore the fact that there are other human beings living a completely different experience to yours, but in the same place. That's what I think makes it special. You know, so the good news is, today, they arrested the suspected shooter, who apparently, yeah. <laughs> they arrested the suspected shooter, who apparently drove here from Philadelphia. And, like, can I just say, Do not bring your shit into New York, okay? <laughs> like, I don't care who you are, where you're from, don't bring your shit into New York. We don't need people bringing in more problems from the outside. We've already got enough going. We don't even have a place to put our garbage, okay? <laughs> We're dealing with things. We need to deal with that before we deal with mass shootings. Like, if you're thinking, oh, I'm gonna go to New York and shake things up, trust me, they're already shaken up. You're not helping. <laughs> Especially in the subway. Now, I don't know if you've ever been on the subway, but the subway is one place where even on a normal day, You never know what's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, maybe you just listen to your podcast and everything is normal. Or maybe a rat masturbates on your shoe. <laughs> could be an uneventful ride. Or you could get pulled in as a fourth member of a mariachi band, you don't know. <laughs> or, or this could be the day that that liquid on the floor finally touches your shoe, you don't know. <laughs> yeah, you know the liquid, you see? You know the liquid. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You never know. 
<laughs> Never know, man. There's a baby selling Twizzlers. That the subway's just happening. <laughs> and speaking and speaking of the problems we have in New York City, they probably could have found this guy even sooner if New York had its shit together. Because first of all, the train conductor tried to tell the cops which way the shooter ran, but nobody could understand because like the shooter's got five hundred friends. The shooter's got five hundred friends. Five hundred friends. And then, when they tried to check the security cameras, this happened. None of the security cameras inside the 36th Street station were transmitting pictures as the train bearing the suspect entered the station. Sources tell CBS2 that cameras at the two stops on either side of the 36th Street station, 45th Street and 25th Street, also had the same connection problems. The MTA has approximately 10,000 cameras at its 472 stations. All were operational except those three, sources say. Really, out of 10,000 cameras in the subway system, the only three <laughs> that weren't working are the ones that could have helped, really? Oh, that's a crazy stroke of bad luck if it were true. <laughs> Look, man, if you live in New York, you know the truth. The subway cameras never work. None of them, ever. Yeah, that's why every station has those signs that say, if you see something, say something. <laughs> they don't see anything. <laughs> they know that cameras won't see shit. We don't even know if those are real cameras. I bet if you crack them open, it's just like chocolate inside. We don't know. <laughs> we assume it's a camera. But let's not get hung up on the details here. The important thing is that those cameras cost New York taxpayers $800,000 each. Don't forget that. <laughs> That's all that matters. So you might be asking, if the cameras weren't working, how did they catch the guy? Well, I'll tell you how. New Yorkers, we our own cameras. Zach Tahon, who was installing surveillance cameras on a business, initially saw James. He knew that face that had been circling on social media, and he went with his gut, flagging down police officers on the street on First Avenue near St. Mark's Place. And I was working, and I gashed him. God, thank God. And he, I, when I see the bag, and his, he was working on the street, I told the people, I see the car police uh, come from the street. I told the police, yo, this is the guy. He killed the seven people from the Brooklyn. We need to catch him today. If we do want to catch him, I kill him. Because this is the guy. Like, he killed seven people. How is it going to be like this? And we take, we catch him. Thank God. Thank what you, was... guys. Woo! Thank you. Thank you. Now, that's what I'm talking about. What? What? That's what I'm talking about, Zach. Everyone should be cheering his name. Zach, 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 Yeah! Whatever you do, don't check his old tweets. We don't care. We don't want to know. He's our hero. We're keeping him. And how amazing is it? How amazing is this for the story that Zach is a security camera installer? That's what he does for a living. Yes, he was installing a security camera when this happened, huh? So if the city had hired Zach to fix their busted-ass subway cameras, then maybe Zach wouldn't have had to get them out of this mess in the first place. <laughs> yeah. And so I say, now that Zach Tahan is a New York City hero, it's time to honor him the New York City way by naming an absolutely disgusting sandwich at a deli after him. <laughs> so you'll be like, Oh, what, you want, you want ham and egg and marinara sauce on buttered rye? Yeah? All right, one Zach DeHaan coming up. <laughs> Let's get it right off, people. It's coming, it's coming. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you to Zach. Thank you to all the New Yorkers who stepped up on the subway yesterday, because this event turned out a whole lot better than it could have. And you know, whatever this guy intended to do to New York, it didn't work, yeah? Because let me tell you, man, New York is a tough place. After 9-11, New York bounced back. After Hurricane Sandy, New York bounced back. After COVID, people were like, oh, New York is never gonna come back. Oh, get out while you can, Trevor. It's come back. <laughs> it always comes back. Yeah. People were like, oh. All the places are gonna be empty. Oh, people have moved back in. Rents are higher than ever before. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I said that like it's a good thing, but still, <laughs> the point is, this city keeps coming back, and that's what makes it the greatest city in the world. <laughs>